everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Dr. Wright Breaks It Down For You. My name is Jessica, and I'm here with my dad, Dr. Wright. Hey, Dad. Hi, Jessica. <laughs> it's starting to become spring in Chicago, so all the flowers are starting to bloom and buds are starting to appear on trees. And I just got to thinking as I was walking my dog how that all happens. And it all seems to be coordinated across most of the plant life where they all decide a certain day in April to all start blooming and little green shoots start sprouting up. So just kind of was wondering why that happens. It seems pretty miraculous. Actually, it is miraculous. And it's not just plants, but animals. They all start responding to the onset of spring. They all start going into the grow and eat phase. It's really quite fascinating. Flowers first made their appearance on Earth about 100 million years ago. And they've developed their own style of how to beat the winter and how to take advantage of the summer. Like all living things, including you and me, flowers can't withstand the cold. It's too damaging. Not just because it's cold, but because it's typically really, really dry and it's windy and it's just really hard. They know they're going to be wiped out if they stay up there. They're going to be starved, starved for water, starved for food, everything. Now, flowers have evolved in a way such that they can lay low. It's called hardening off and wait out the assault of the wintertime. Now, some animals will move south for the winter, while other ones get really thick fur like the buffalo or horses even. Right. And some will bulk up their fat and move to a secure area. Some, like everything from bears to mosquitoes, will dig into the dirt in caves or in just the dirt itself, and they protect themselves. Right, but how on earth do they know when it's time to wake up? Because I've noticed that sometimes the flowers will get it wrong. You'll see the green shoots, and it'll start to become warm, and then all of a sudden the next day it'll be kind of cold. So it's not like it's warm for a long time, and then they know, okay, it's time, and then they start blooming it. Right. Now, most plants have chemicals inside them that respond to the amount of daylight. The light is really? everything to yeah, light is everything to plants. Light gives it their energy, everything, and it also acts as a timer. As the sunlight hits the plants, the plant actually converts proteins into other chemicals. As the days get shorter, the chlorophyll processes less protein and this unprocessed protein starts building up. As it builds up, it triggers the genes inside the plant to say, "Hey, the days are getting shorter, start going into your hardening off stage. Wow. So it's really quite cool. Now, there's annuals and there's perennials. Now, annuals are the kind of plants that basically die every year. But before they die, they give off this hardened plant that has basically a thick fur on it. Those are called seeds. So the plant knows it's going to die. So it takes its genetic material, puts it inside of a hard seed, gives a little food inside the seed, and tosses it off. How does it know it's going to die? Oh, because of the winter, right, because, because of the light because cycle. Because of the shortened days. And so these little seeds act as little escape pods, like on Star Trek, where <laughs> they know that this big spaceship is going to die and get blown up. So they put the DNA in these little escape pods, called seeds, and they throw them out. Perennial plants are different. Now, perennial plants come back every year. Now, we know that snakes and mosquitoes and all kinds of things dig holes in the ground, and they hide in the ground to keep out of the cold. Perennial plants kind of do the same thing. The upper part of the plant dies off, but the deep root parts that are underneath the dirt stay alive and they're protected by the dirt. And these come back after winter when it starts warming up and when the days start getting longer again and the plant grows back again. It's all chemical and it's all about the length of the day. Wow. It's called photoperiodism. And what it does is photo being light and period means a time frame. And so they all do it by that. And, you know, to a degree, we have that same kind of thing. A lot of people say that people get depressed during the winter time, and they think it's because the shortened days act on our chemicals that make us want to do less and kind of go into a hibernation mode. Right. Yeah. When you feel depressed, when you have those feelings, you don't feel like going outside, you don't feel like running around, doing active stuff. It's kind of more hunkering down, eating more, and hibernating. That's really interesting. As a matter of fact, some psychologists have found that if you go into like a tanning booth or expose yourself to some high power light, it will actually get rid of the depression. And it's just not psychological. It's actually almost chemical too. Wow. Kind of cool. It's pretty awesome. Well, thanks dad so much for sharing all that. I really had no idea. That's, I mean, the sun is obviously very powerful, but I guess I didn't really realize how much the sun has influenced our very cells. Life, you know, is on a cellular level very dependent on the sun and its movements and the length of the days. And that concludes this week's episode of Dr. Wright Breaks It Down for you. Everyone tune in next week to hear our next 
delightful discussion about scientific phenomena. And yeah, if anyone has any ideas for a podcast, please definitely send them our way. We would love to hear from you all. Thanks so much, Dad. Thank you.